Unity Dots or Data Oriented Technology Stack is a different way of coding your games that will make them 2 to 10 times more performant. This technology stack is composed out of multiple tools such as ECS, Burst or c -sharp Job System, but ECS plays the main role. It is also known as Entity Component System and using it you are still writing classic c -sharp code, but you just need to think about it in a different way. Let's say that you want to spawn hundreds of cubes and just make them move. So normally you would create some cube script, put it to all of these cubes and just make them move. But using ECS, instead of changing positions of the cubes on each of the cubes, we will just create a single script called system that will be controlling all of these cube positions. So you can have multiple systems, but each of these systems is just handling one functionality. In the system, we will loop through all of the cube objects and we will just change their positions. But let's say that each of the cubes should move at a different speed. So we will not be putting this variable into the system. Instead, we will create a component called cube, which will put on all of these cubes and just store the data there. So the three main parts of ECS are systems, which are controlling many objects. Second one are components, which are just holding some data for the objects that systems should do something with. And third part are entities, which are the same as game objects. They are just holding some data. So to them, you can put these components. To start using ECS, you need to have Unity version at least 2022.3.0. And you also need to create your project with universal render pipeline or high definition render pipeline. To start, we will need to download few packages, so go to the package manager and go to the Unity registry packages. The main one is the entities package, then if you want to render some meshes, you should also download the entities graphics package. If you want to convert your code into highly optimized machine code, you can just download the burst package and the conversion is really simple. And to be able to access multiple data types and mathematical functions, you should also download the mathematics package. And let's start with a basic example, which will be just a spawner that will be spawning many cubes that will be moving in random directions and they will be slowing by time. First, we'll need to make the cube spawner and it will also need to hold some data about the prefab that we want to use, about the delay when the cubes should spawn. So we'll need to create the component that will be just holding the data about the spawner. And I would also suggest you to create two folders, where one will be for all of the systems and second one for all of the components. In all of the scripts that we'll be working on today, we won't need any of these functions and we also won't need any of these using statements, even for the Unity engine. We'll need to add using unity.entities, which will just give us access to all of the functions and classes that we need to use when creating these components and systems. In order for this class to be a component, we need to derive from an interface I component data. And because the whole dots, the data oriented technology stack, is data oriented as the name says, and not object oriented, this can't be a class, instead it will be a struct. And inside here we can store all of the values that we want our spawner to have, so it will be some prefab, the spawn delay, and so on. But when I try typing, let's say, public game object, we obviously can't use that because we have removed using Unity Engine. But anyways, if we would edit, we can't use that type in the component. So what we will need to do instead is use the type entity. And if you would want to add a vector free for the spawn position, we need to add using mathematics. So we can define the variables just like that and now we will get to Unity. Where instead of adding all of the entities to the scene, we will add them in a subscene where all of the entities are. So just go to the hierarchy, right click and select new subscene and empty scene. Subscene is just a scene inside our scene, but don't worry all of the objects or entities that will be inside it will be visible in the main scene. Under the subscene, I will just create empty object, which will be the spawner. Now you may also notice that when selecting some of the objects in the inspector, we can select between the altering and the runtime mode. So in the runtime, 
we will just see all of the data components of the entity and the authoring mode is used just to set up some stuff. So for the spawner, we could set up the prefab and the delay time. Now to the spawner, we obviously can't add the cube spawner data component because it is not deriving from mono behavior. So we will need to create script cube spawner authoring. This script is not a system and not even a component. We will just use it to set some of the initial data that the entity will have because you can only create entities at runtime. So here in the mono behavior class, we will just define the variables that we need to set on the spawner from start. So we have a public variable for the prefab, which is a game object type, because we can't put entity into the inspector. And we also have a variable for the spawn rate. Next, I will create a baker that will create a entity and add a data component to it which will be the cube spawner component and we will set the prefab and the spawn rate based on the values that we have in the mono behavior script. So this is how the cube spawner baker class should look like. It is inheriting from the baker and the type is the cube spawner authoring, which is just holding the data that we will need to set before we run the game. This will create us the entity that we can later get in the public override void bake. So I'm just getting the entity, storing it in a variable, and we can just leave the transform usage flags to none. And now I will add the cube spawner component to the entity and set all of its variables. So I'm adding a component and be aware that this is not the normal unity component. This is the entity component. I am adding it to the entity, which is the new spawner. So we are creating new cube spawner component and I'm setting all of its values. So the prefab, because it is a game object on the cube spawner authoring, we need to use get entity and I'm getting it from the authoring.prefab where the authoring that we have is a reference to the cube spawner authoring mono behavior class. So I'm setting the spawn position, next spawn time and spawn rate the same way. Now if we would run the game, nothing would happen and no entities would spawn. So we will need to add the cube spawner altering to the cube spawner object that we have in the subscene. And when we play the game, nothing really happens. We can't see any entities in the hierarchy. So we will need to go to window, entities and open the entities hierarchy in which under the subscene we can now see the cube spawner which is actually a entity and when we select it and go to the runtime mode we can see that on it we have the cube spawner component which is holding the correct prefab spawn position next spawn time and the spawn rate without using the baker we would just have the cube spawner object without the component on it now let's get to the cube spawner system which will not actually be on the cube spawner itself it will just be lying in the project and it will be called on all of the cube spawners that we have. It will just take the data from it. So it will take the prefab and the spawn position and just go through all of the spawners that we have in the scene. For now, I will just set it up for one and spawn the objects based on these values. In order to make the system work, We'll again need to inherit from a interface. This time it will be I system. Sometimes you could also see system base, which is not the best option, I think, because you can't use burst and it is less optimized. And for the system to work, it can't be a class, but it needs to be partial struct. I have added a public void on update, which you have guessed it. It is just as a normal update. And we also have a reference for the state using which we'll also be able to spawn the entities. Now let's implement the burst to convert the code into high optimized machine code, which is really simple. Just add using unity.burst and before the struct and the void, you need to add attribute burst compile. Now I will check if there is any cube spawner in the scene. So we'll be just looking for the component and then we will do some other stuff with it. Because I will be using just one cube spawner in the entire scene, we can use system.api try get singleton entity 
and the entity is the cube spawner component. Otherwise, if you would have multiple spawner components, later I will also show you how to do that. So I'm just getting the spawner entity and I'm also getting the cube spawner component from it. So we also need to use reference read and write because you want to read and write from the component. If you would want to just have it read only, you can use ref read only. Now, as we have all of the data about the object and the position where we should spawn it, we can create new entity and assign it some mesh, so it can be just a cube. Now, to spawn it, we can use just state dot entity manager dot create entity, but this is not going to work with the burst compiler. So, if you want to have it more effective, you can use something called entity command buffer, into which you can just queue up all of the commands and then execute them at once. I'm creating the entity command buffer using allocator.temp, so it is just temporarily allocated. And then I'm checking if the next spawn time value from the spawner is less than the elapsed time that we can get from the system API that's time, that elapsed time. If this is true, we can create new entity using the entity command buffer, so ecb.instantiate, and then just import the spawner prefab. You can see that right now I'm using just the value ro, so value read only, because we just need to read the time. But later, as we will also want to set the next spawn time, we will need to use value read and write. I'm setting the next spawn time, so just the elapsed time plus the spawn rate, and then in order to execute all of the commands that we have in the entity command buffer, we need to call ecb.playback and import this entity manager. For the cube spawner system, you don't actually have to be putting it on any object, you can just leave it in the project and you can see that there are already some cube entities being spawned and you can also see one of the cubes. You can also import any other prefabs you want. On the cube spawner entity, we can see that the next spawn time is changing and we can also manually change the spawn rate and any of that stuff. And when we take a look at these cubes, we can see that many components got automatically added because we are using the instantiate function. If we would want to render some mesh manually, we would have to add all of these components by ourselves. So we are able to spawn many cubes, but they are not holding any data that we can use. They are not holding any movement speed, movement direction that we could then use in another system that would be moving all of these cubes. So we will just need to add the components to them when we are instantiating the entity. I have created a new component, the same way that we have done it before, that we will add to all of the cubes. So this is just holding the movement direction and speed. Now back on the cube spawner system, when we create the entity to the entity component buffer, I'm also adding components to the new entity. So create new cube component and set all of the variables such as the move direction and move speed. In order to be able to use float free here, I also had to import using unity.mathematics and we can leave the rest as it was. So we are still spawning the same cubes, but when I select one of them, we can see that it also has the cube component which is holding the move direction and move speed. So then on the cube system, we could just go through all of the cubes that we have in our scene and we could just move them based on the direction and speed. And because directions of all of the cubes are still the same, I will go back to the cube spawner system and just make it random. The way to get a random value in dots is a bit weird. So we need to first add using unity.mathematics and then we can use random.createFromIndex and we need to supply it unsigned integer. So in this case, to make it random, it may not be totally random. <laughs> I'm using the elapsed time divided by the data time. And because we want a float free for the direction, I'm using the command dot next float free. And now as the cubes are being spawned in, in the entity inspector, we can see that each of them has a different move direction. Pretty cool. And because I don't want this video to be too long, I will just quickly show you the cube system, which goes through all of the cubes and moves them in the direction based on the speed. So we have the cube system, again inheriting from my system. We have the public void on update. First I am getting the entity manager, 
so that I can then get all entities from it. In the for each loop, I am going through all of the entities and checking if they have the cube component. If they have it, I am also getting the local transform, so that we can then just make it move based on the direction and the move speed. And to make sure that the position is updating, we also need to set the component data back to it. So I'm setting the local transform data and then I'm also setting the cube data, which is just holding the movement speed. So I have it set up that it is slowing down. So if the move speed is greater than zero, I'm just subtracting some value from it and then setting it back to the cube component. And this is how the final result looks like. So we can see that we are spawning hundreds of cubes and they are moving in the random direction and also after some time they just stop. Now you may be wondering what is the performance difference between using ECS and not using it. So I have done some tests just using this simple cube spawner and with ECS we were getting around 770 frames per second which definitely is playable and without ECS I was getting 190 frames per second which is about five times worse. The performance difference will obviously depend on the type of game you are developing. So if you are spawning hundreds of entities like me, there will definitely be a drastic improve in performance. But if you are developing some game that is not really that performance heavy, the increase might not be that great. But still, every FPS counts. And if you are asking me if DOTS is production ready, it definitely is. Some really famous games were already made by it, such as V Rising, and Hard Space Shipbreaker. And this is all for this Unity Dots Beginner's Guide. In future I am definitely planning to be making a lot more videos about Dots and ECS, so stay tuned for that. I hope this video was useful, if you have any questions or suggestions, drop them down to the comments, don't forget to like, subscribe and I will see you in next videos, bye! Thanks for watching this video till the end. If you are looking for a Unity, C Sharp or Bolt tutor, then I am here for you, so feel free to send me a message to my gmail and take a look at my website for more info. I can help you with your personal projects or teach you anything about game development you would want to know. You are welcome.